assalamu alaikum medical physics students basically the topic which we discuss today is electromagnetic radiation the first thing you uh, you all need to remember about electromagnetic radiation is that the electromagnetic radiation is the combination of two fields first is electric field and the second is magnetic field and the next point is that these two fields means electric field or magnetic field are continuously oscillating or vibrating perpendicularly upon each other and due to the perpendicular oscillation of electric field and magnetic field a wave is generated and that wave is called electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation so as you all see on the screen that there is a diagram which showing that electric field and magnetic field both are perpendicular to each other the axis of electric field is perpendicular is uh, upward and the axis of magnetic field is horizontal and uh, it is clearly visible on the two fields are oscillating upon each other now so how can we define electromagnetic radiation so electromagnetic radiation is the is a is a form of energy and the and that form of energy is propagated through space or through a material in the form of electromagnetic waves and the electromagnetic waves are consist on seven members named radio wave microwave visible light gamma rays etc so electromagnetic radiation is also referred to the emission and transmission of radiant energy radiant energy means the energy which travels from one point to another point so electromagnetic radiation is the form of energy that always propagated through space or through material in the form of electromagnetic waves now electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation is always consist on electromagnetic spectrum and electromagnetic spectrum is a family of seven members so it means that electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic radiation is consist on seven different waves and the name of that waves are shown on the screen radio waves the first member is radio wave second microwave third infrared radiation fourth visible light fifth ultraviolet radiations sixth x rays and the seventh gamma rays so the important features which you all need to remember about electromagnetic spectrum is that they can travel through space or vacuum yani electromagnetic radiation jo hai wo hamesha vacuum se travel karti hai and in a vacuum they travel with the speed of light which is very exponential 8 meter per second and it mean it means that all the components of electromagnetic spectrum have same speed or traveling with same speed which is 3.0 exponential 8 meter per second the third point is that these all waves of an electromagnetic spectrum are transverse wave because they because they because in these all waves electric and magnetic field are oscillating at right angle to the direction of travel now the fourth point is that electromagnetic waves always transfer energy from one point to another point that's why we are calling electromagnetic radiations a form of radiant energy so electromagnetic radiation is consist of an electromagnetic spectrum electromagnetic spectrum is a family of seven members and electromagnetic radiation is the form of energy that always propagated through space or through material and uh, it always propagated through space and all the components present in electromagnetic radiations are traveling with the speed of light which is 3.0 exponential 8 meter per second now the relationship between wavelength and frequency now for the first thing which you all need to know that what is a, what is a wavelength and what is a frequency now first we ex first i explain the wavelength the wavelength is the distance between two corresponding points on the wave as it is clearly shown on the screen that that the two corresponding points either the points are on up, are the either the points are upward or downward but the distance between the two corresponding points always shows the wavelength of the wave now the frequency the frequency is defined as the number of waves passing at a point in one second it means that in one second how many waves are passing through a point when you divide the number of waves with the time the waves taken to travel through a point then after dividing the number of waves with the time you will get the frequency 
the free SI unit for the frequency is Hertz and the SI unit for wavelength is meter because wavelength is a type of wave, is a type of length. So SI unit of wavelength is meter and the SI unit of frequency is Hertz and one Hertz is defined as one vibration per second. It means there is only one vibration in one second. If there is only one vibration in one second, then the frequency will be one Hertz and the time required for one vibration is called time period. So there is another important relation and the relation is that the frequency and time period both are inversely proportional to each other. So by using wavelength and frequency we drive an important equation which is known as wave equation and the equation is V is equal to F lambda. In this equation V stands for speed, F stands for frequency and lambda stands for wavelength and when we drive and when we make frequency a subject, then the formula will be F is equal to V over lambda. It means frequency is equal to speed divided by wavelength. And it is, it is clearly shown on the screen that frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. It means if the wavelength of a wave increases, then its frequency decreases. And if the, frequent, if the wavelength of the wave decreases, then its frequency increases. So the relationship between wavelength and frequency is that both are inversely proportional to each other. If you change the one quantity, then the other quantity always changes. Intensity and the distance. So whenever the radiation is absorbed by some material or by some matter, then the photons always transfer their energy to the matter. Energy always travel in the form of photons and the photons is the bundle or packets of energy. And when, an ob when the photon falls on any object or matter, then the matter always absorbs the photons and in this way the photons transfer their energy to the matter. Now the energy deposited by a beam of electron depends upon the number of photons and the energy of each photon. Yani, aapke paas beam of electron jo energy deposit kar rahi hai, wo depend karega ki us beam mein kitne number of photons maujud hai. Aur un photons ki energy par depend karti hai. Sahi hai? Ye jo energy deposition hoti hai beam of electrons ki. Now, the third point is that the intensity of radiation means how much energy arrives at each square meter of surface per second. It means each square meter of surface per second, on each square meter of surface per second, how much energy arrived at the surface. Then this quantity is known as or this phenomena or this process is known as intensity of radiation. Yani kisi bhi square meter of surface per second par kitni energy arrive kar rahi hai, kitni energy pahunch rahi hai, to wo kehlaega radiation ki intensity. The intensity of the beam of radiation decreases with the distance from the source. It means if you increase the distance from the source, then the intensity of the beam of radiation decreases. So the beam gets spread out when the radiation or when the radiation when the beam of radiation fall on an object or when the beam of radiation emits from a source, then the beam always gets spread out in all direction. The beam gets partially absorbed as it travels. So there is some sort of air particles in the path of the beam. So the air particles or the matter particles present in the path of the beam also gets energy or absorb some energy from the beam of radiation. Ionization. Some high energy electromagnetic radiations like ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. Because ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays, these three components have highest frequency in the electromagnetic spectrum that's why their energy is higher so these three high energy radiation electromagnetic radiations are also known as ionizing radiation because when these radiations are absorbed by any atom or molecule then the atom or molecule after getting energy from these radiation removes their valence electron or outermost electron that's why the atom or molecule ionizes or becomes an ion after removing or after emitting out an electron from their valence shell. So that's why we are calling ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays an ionizing radiation because they have an ability to make any atom or molecule an ion. So according to Max Planck's equation, which is E is equal to HF, in this equation E is stands for energy, H stands for Planck constant and F stands for frequency. So according to this equation, energy is directly proportional to frequency. That's why 
the ultraviolet x rays and gamma rays have higher energy because their frequency is very higher but when we talk about radio wave microwave infrared so these three components have lowest frequency that's why their energy is also low so they so if the cells are exposed to ionizing radiation then these ionizing radiations can cause harm or uh, to your cells dna or can damage the dna of dna present in the nucleus of your cell so when there is a continuous exposure of ionizing radiations on your body or on your cell then this radiation causes genetic mutation in your cell and this genetic muta mutation leads towards the cancer so very high dose of ionizing radiations can kill cancer cells and can can kill cells and excessive exposure of ultraviolet radiation can lead to sunburn it means when you are when you are continuously exposing yourself to ultraviolet radiation then the these then the excessive exposure of ultraviolet radiation can cause sunburn to your skin to your skin or causes skin cancer so it means that there is a simple philosophy that increased exposure of ionizing radiation means more damage to you to yourself or to your environment so remember one important thing which is when an electromagnetic radiation photon hits an atom or molecule then the atom or molecule gets the energy from the photon and after getting the energy atom or molecule emits out their valence electron and converts into an ion so the photon which converts an atom or molecule into an ion have the highest amount of energy that's why we are calling the photons an ionizing radiation and the ionizing radiations are of three type ultraviolet x rays gamma rays because these three components of electromagnetic radiation have high energy because of their higher frequency now the first component of electromagnetic spectrum is radio wave radio waves are the type of electromagnetic radiation which is used in communication technologies like satellite broadcasting televisions phones radios because these devices receive radio waves and convert the radio waves into mechanical vibration and these mechanical vibrations in the speaker create sound waves so radio waves so radio radio waves are the part of electromagnetic spectrum which have the longest wavelength when the range of the wavelength is from about 0.04 inches 1 mm to more than 62 miles or 100 km and the radio waves have the lowest frequency which is about 3000 cycles per second or 3 kilohertz or up to 300 billion hertz or 300 gigahertz so the third point about radio wave is that the radio waves always used in communications so the communication signals consist on radio wave always travel through air in a straight line and if there is some sort of hindrance in the path of the radio wave so they can they reflect back after striking through the obstruction or the things which comes in the path of the radio wave so when the radio when we use the radio waves in satellite communication then the radio waves emitted out from the transmitter and uh, the tra they are traveling in a straight line and when they strike and when there is some sort of clouds or layers of ionosphere then they reflect off from the clouds or ionospheres and uh, some radio waves reach towards the satellite where they are boosted or amplified by the satellite and then again transmitted towards the earth and again transmitted towards those areas in which receivers are present so that's how the communication through radio waves takes place so radio waves also used in standard broadcasting like radio television short wave radio navigation and air traffic control radio wave also used in cellular telephony and remote control twice so as you all know that or i will teach you in the previous slide that radio waves always travel in a straight line so there is some sort of transmitting and receiving device is required for the traveling of the radio wave so radio wave is always travel from the transmitting to the receiving antenna and it may disrupt when there is some sort of buildings or large objects in the path of the radio wave so after striking through that objects radio waves reflect in different directions and causes disturbance so these disturbance arises when several such reflected parts of the wave reach the receiving antenna and interfere with the reception of the wave it means ke baki ki jo waves reh gayi 
उनके साथ क्या कर जाती हैं वेव्स रिफ्लेक्ट होने के बाद क्या करती हैं उनके साथ इंटरसेप्ट कर जाती हैं सही है इंटरफेयर कर जाती हैं तो इसी वजह से होता क्या है कि आपकी जो रेडियो वेव है उसमें कह लें कि डिस्टरबेंस क्रिएट होती है और रेडियो वेव अपने कह लें कि जो एंटीना है आपका रिसीविंग एंटीना वहां तक सही तरीके से पहुंच नहीं पाती जिसकी वजह से आपके कम्युनिकेशन में डिले आता है सो रेडियो वेव जो है वो हमेशा नॉन कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल से पेनिट्रेट कर जाती है लाइक वुड ब्रेक्स कंक्रीट दीज आर द नॉन कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल एंड रेडियो वेव ऑलवेज और कैन पेनिट्रेट थ्रू नॉन कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल बट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द कंडक्टर्स रेडियो वेव कैन नॉट पास थ्रू द कंडक्टर्स लाइक वॉटर एंड मेटल्स सो रेडियो वेव इज कंसिस्ट ऑन द बैंड ऑफ frequencies and there are nine band of there are nine bands present in the radio waves the first is extremely low frequency and the frequency is less than 3 kilohertz but the wavelength is greater than 100 km very low frequency the frequency is between 3 to 30 kilohertz and the wavelength is 10 to 100 km low frequency the frequency is 30 to 300 kilohertz and the wavelength is 1 meter to 10 km medium frequency the frequency is 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz and the wavelength is ranging from 100 meter to 1 kilometer fourth is very high fifth is very fifth fourth is high frequency fifth is very high frequency sixth is ultra high frequency and the next is super high frequency and the last is extremely high frequency and the frequency range of the extremely high frequency is 30 to 300 gigahertz and the wavelength range from 1 mm to 1 cm so you so it is clearly seen on the screen that as the frequency increases the wavelength of the wave radio wave or the band of the radio wave decreases now the second part of the electromagnetic spectrum is microwaves microwaves are also a form of electromagnetic radiation and which uh, electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths ranging from 1 meter to 1 millimeter it means the wavelength of the microwave is greater than radio wave and the frequency of the microwave is between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz so microwaves are the principal carrier of high speed data transmission so when you are supposed to send high so you are supposed to make data transmission with high speed then then we need to use microwaves because microwaves are capable of transmitting that data with high speed between stations on earth and also on ground based stations and satellites that's why we are using microwaves in the broadcast communication or uh, in satellite communication microwaves transmitter and receivers are parabolic in nature as it is clearly in, on the screen that the transmitter and receiver both are in the curve shape and this curve shape is called parabola so microwave transmitters and receivers are parabolic dish antennas and these dish antennas produce microwaves and the microwaves are spreading in different angles and the spreading angle is proportional to the ratio of the wavelength and uh, of the constituent wave to the diameter of the dish yani aapka keh le ke jo spreading angle hai yani jab radio jab microwave transmitter se nikalti hai to wo spread karti hai different angles par sahi hai different directions mein spread karti hai तो आपने ये याद रखना है कि ये जो स्प्रेडिंग एंगल है ये प्रोपोर्शनल होता है रेशो ऑफ वेवलेंथ यानी आप क्या करें वेव की वेवलेंथ को डायमीटर ऑफ डिश से डिवाइड कर दें तो ये एक रेशो बन गया तो जो स्प्रेडिंग एंगल है वो इस रेशो के प्रोपोर्शनल होता है इसका मतलब अगर ये रेशो ज्यादा है तो माइक्रोवेव जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा स्प्रेड होगी उसका स्प्रेडिंग एंगल भी ज्यादा होगा अगर रेशो जो है वेव का डायमीटर ऑफ डिश का जो रेशो है सही है तो ये अगर रेशो कम होगा तो आपका जो स्प्रेडिंग एंगल है वो भी क्या होगा so micro microwave beams always directed like a search light and uh, microwave beams are also called radar beams because they consist on the short pulses of microwaves so one can determine the distance of an aeroplane or ship by measuring the time it takes it means the radar emits out the microwave radiation and the microwave radiation travels some time travels or takes some certain time to travel and after striking the object it reflects back towards the receiver or towards the radar dish antenna so this takes time to travel and strike an object and then again reflect back towards the source so due to this process or by using this process one can determine uh, one can determine an aer an airplane or ship or the distance of an airplane and ship so microwave radars are widely used for guiding airplanes and uh, vessels and for detecting speed motorists so microwaves easily penetrate through a cloud of smoke 
but are scattered by water drops. Microwaves can easily penetrate or passes through the clouds. But when there is some sort of water droplets present in the cloud, then after striking through the water droplets, microwaves is scattered in different direction. So microwaves are also used for mapping meteorological disturbances in the space and also in the weather forecasting. Microwaves, which are called heating and cooking food, may be called an important role play. Karta hai. Because when we are supposed to cook food, then the water is a water is the basic ingredient of the food. It means that there is some sort of water particles present inside the food. And when you place the food stuff in a microwave, then the energy emitted out from the microwave is absorbed by the water molecules present in the food and the water molecules heats up. And when the water molecule heats up, the whole food becomes hot. The whole food is uh, becomes to heat up. And in this way, the food or uh, the food stuff becomes hot. So inside कह लें कि microwave के अंदर होता क्या है कि inside यानी कह लें कि चारों तरफ से जो है microwave radiation food पे fall करती हैं आपके और आपके food के अंदर जो water particles मौजूद हैं that's what that water particles are supposed to absorb the microwave radiation and uh, after getting the microwave radiation the energy of the water particle increases and this energy is transferred to the food stuff particles and in this way the food also gets energy and becomes hot. The third component of an electromagnetic spectrum is infrared radiation. Infrared radiation or IR radiation is simply referred to as infrared and uh, the wavelength of the infrared radiation is uh, smaller than radio and microwave and the wavelength range about 700 nanometer to 1 millimeter. But when we talk about the frequency, the frequency of the infrared is greater than radio and microwave. So infrared waves are longer than visible light because visible light is the fourth component of the in electromagnetic spectrum but infrared waves are shorter than radio and microwaves the frequency of the infrared radiation are higher than radio and microwaves and the range and the frequency ranging from 300 gigahertz to 400 terahertz and uh, infrared radiation is invisible to human eye but because although longer infrared waves can be sensed at heat it means that when an infrared radiation falls on our skin then we can sense the presence of an infrared radiation as heat but the infrared radiation is invisible to the human eye. So in, we can use infrared radiation in a variety of applications like infrared radiations are used for in, th in thermal imaging, in heat sensors, in night vision equipment and in burglars alarm. It means we are using infrared radiation for security purposes also. In communication and networking, infra infrared radiation is also always used in wired or wireless operation. Suppose you have a remote control. So the remote control emits infrared light from the light emitting diode because a light emitting diode is installed on the circuit of the remote. When you press the button, the LED or light emitting diode transmitted out an infrared radiation on convert the signal into infrared radiation and transmit it out the signal and then send the signal to the home entertaining device like television or any other device. What happens receiver जब आपके पास इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन ट्रांसमिट होती है और उस रिसीवर पे जाती है तो वहां पे रिसीवर क्या करता है द रिसीवर डिकोडेड द सिग्नल इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन देन परफॉर्म द वर्क व्हिच यू व्हिच यू आर सपोज्ड टू परफॉर्म जैसे कि टेलीविजन है आपने क्या किया आपके हाथ में रिमोट है आपने बटन दबाया तो रिमोट क्या करता है वो सिग्नल जो है वो एलईडी क्या करती है इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन में कन्वर्ट करके इमिट आउट करती है देन देयर इज अ रिसीवर इंस्टॉल्ड ऑन द एलईडी ऑन द एलसीडी और टेलीविजन then the receiver received the infrared signal in the form of infrared radiation and then decoded the signal into electronic signal and then performed the work. So infrared light or infrared radiation also used in fiber optic cables to transmit data. So there is extremely, there is an extensive use of infrared radiation in astronomy to observe the objects present in the space or to detect the movement of the objects present in the space which are not which cannot be seen by by a naked human eye and uh, by using infrared radiation radiation in astronomy we can study molecular clouds stars planets and active galaxies there are some sort of artificial sources of infrared radiation also present in this world besides hot objects infrared hot objects 
यानी कह लें कि हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट्स देखें एक तो क्या होता है कि आपके जब हॉट होते हैं बेसिकली जो हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट्स होते हैं द हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट्स इमिटेड आउट हीट एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन यानी जब आप देखें आपको बहुत ज्यादा तेज बुखार होता है तो आप देखते हैं कि देर इज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ हीट एनर्जी रेडिएटेड आउट फ्रॉम योर बॉडी सो दैट हीट एनर्जी इज द फॉर्म ऑफ इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन सो हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट्स तो हैं जो इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन को इमिट आउट करते हैं बट दे आर बिसाइड द हॉट ऑब्जेक्ट देर आर सम सॉर्ट ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल सोर्सेस of infrared radiations present and that sources include infrared leds light emitting diodes which are continuously fabricated for the purpose that they are supposed to emit it emitted out infrared radiation and also infrared lasers light laser lights the main purpose of using leds is that leds are extensively small and inexpensive device and consume less power because they are made from semiconducting materials like gallium and arsenide infrared leds are employed as opto isolators and as a light source in some optical fibers based communication system it means in some optical fiber based communication you can use infrared leds as a light source because in optical fiber in optical base in of in fi optic fiber optics based communication system you will transmit data in the form of infrared radiation that's why you need some source of an infrared radiation and we use infrared leds as a source because infrared leds are inexpensive and small and cheap device and consumes less power so powerful optically pumped infrared lasers jo hain wo develop kiye gayi hain by using carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide so carbon dioxide infrared lasers jo hain ise hum use karte hain to induce and alters chemical reaction in isotope separation yani when you are supposed to separate isotopes and uh, during and for the separation of isotopes you need to alter the chemical reaction so for alter for the altering of chemical reaction you need in you need op powerful optically pump infrared lasers which are also known as carbon dioxide infrared lasers other application of infrared laser lights include range finders of automatic self focusing cameras and the infrared radiation also used for security purposes and also used for night vision optical instrument The fourth component of the electromagnetic spectrum is visible light. Visible light is the most familiar for component of an electromagnetic spectrum, which makes up the most portion of which makes up that which makes up that portion of the spectrum, which is visible to the which is sensitive to the eye. And uh, this portion uh, is very narrow. यानी ये जो invisible light का portion होता है ना ये बहुत ही narrow होता है. और ये बहुत ही ज्यादा सेंसिटिव होता है टू आई और इसकी जो वेवलेंथ होती है विजिबल लाइट की वो स्मॉलर होती है देन रेडियो वेव माइक्रोवेव एंड इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन बट द फ्रीक्वेंसी इज हायर देन रेडियो वेव माइक्रोवेव एंड इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन एंड विदाउट विजिबल लाइट देयर इज नो लाइफ ऑन द अर्थ इट मींस लाइफ कुड नॉट एग्जिस्ट ऑन द अर्थ विदाउट विजिबल लाइट बिकॉज़ द विजिबल लाइट रिप्रेजेंट्स द पीक ऑफ द सन्स स्पेक्ट्रम एंड इट इज वेरी एसेंशियल for the survival of life uh, for the survival of life on earth because plants use the infra plant absorb the visible light coming from the sun and uh, use that visible light uh, to produce th for the process of photosynthesis from which the plant produces carbohydrates and proteins for their foods and uh, coal and oil are the sources of energy which can also be accumulated from sunlight in plants and microorganisms and uh, when we talk about hydroelectric power systems so for hydroelectric power system there is a dire need of hydrological cycle hydrological cycle means ke water jo hai wo absorb karte hain clouds aakar aur clouds aake water absorb karte hain then clouds phir barish karte hain to ye puri ek hydrological cycle hoti hai to ye jo hydrological hydrological cycle hai isko motion mein rakhne ke liye bhi sunlight se jo sunlight ki zarurat hoti hai to it means visible light is response is uh, is keh le ke required for hydrological cycle kyunki visible light jo hoti hai sun ki usse kya hota hai us garmi ki wajah se aapke clouds jo hain wo water vapors ko absorb karte hain then the clouds moved on and then the clouds uh, starts to rain starts to drizzle to is tarah kya hota hai ki aapki jo water cycle hai ke pani absorb hua fir pani jo hai wo barish ki form mein niche aa gaya to ek hydrological cycle chalti hai jiski wajah se क्या होता है आपके रिवर्स में वाटर लेवल मेंटेन होता है और फिर आप क्या करते हैं हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर सिस्टम्स को यूज करके पानी के जरिए इलेक्ट्रिसिटी को क्या करते हैं जनरेट करते हैं सो विजिबल लाइट जो है ये बहुत ही कह लें कि इंपॉर्टेंट है फॉर द लाइफ ऑन अर्थ एंड विदाउट द विजिबल लाइट देयर इज नो लाइफ ऑन द अर्थ एंड द स्पैन और द पोर्शन ऑफ द विजिबल लाइट इन इलेक्ट्रो इन एन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इज वेरी नैरो बट द विजिबल लाइट इज सेंसिटिव टू द्यूमन आई 
The fifth component is ultraviolet radiation. The wavelength of the ultraviolet radiation is higher than the visible light, but the frequency is lowest than the visible light, but the frequency is higher than the visible light. So, when an ultraviolet radiation strikes certain material, then the then those material starts to fluorescence because ultraviolet radiation always causes fluorescence when they strike the material. They, when the when the material when the ultraviolet radiation strikes the material, then the material starts to emit out radi electromagnetic radiation of lower energy such as visible light. यानी visible light उन objects से क्या होना शुरू हो जाती है? Emit out होना शुरू हो जाती है और वो object चमकने लगते हैं. जब आप किसी object पर ultraviolet light को fall करते हैं, then the visible light being emitted out from the object और वो object क्या करने लगता है? Glow करने लगता है. और जो स्पेक्ट्रा में फ्लोरेसेंट लाइट का वो बेसिकली क्या होता है वो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक होती है ऑफ द मटेरियल कंपोजिशन एंड कैन बी यूज फॉर स्क्रीनिंग मटेरियल्स इट मींस फॉर स्क्रीनिंग मटेरियल्स वी आर यूजिंग अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट वी जस्ट आई विल स्ट्राइक द अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट ऑन द मटेरियल एंड द मटेरियल आफ्टर एब्जॉर्बिंग द अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट इमिट आउट विजिबल लाइट एंड फ्रॉम दिस प्रोसेस वी कैन स्टडी द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द मटेरियल्स कंपोजिशन एंड अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन आल्सो यूज फॉर डिटेक्टिंग बैक्टीरियाज इन स्पॉइल्ड फूड एंड आइडेंटिफाइंग पिगमेंट्स एंड डिटेक्टिंग फोर्जरीज ऑफ आर्टवर्क एंड अदर ऑब्जेक्ट्स लाइक एंशियन मार्बल स्कल्पचर्स की सरफेस को स्टडी करने के लिए कितनी पुरानी सरफेस है इसके लिए आप क्या करते हो येलो ग्रीन तरह कलर की फ्लोरिसंस लाइट यूज करते हो सही है तो इस अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन के जरिए आप क्या करते हो स्टडी करते हो डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट्स को स्टडी कर सकते हो इसके अलावा आर्ट वर्क में जो फोर्जरीज होती है जो टेम्परिंग है उसे डिटेक्ट कर सकते हो पिगमेंट्स आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं एंड देन द मेन पर्पस इज दैट बाय यूजिंग अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन वी कैन डिटेक्ट बैक्टीरिया इन स्पॉइल फूड अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन इज इनविजिबल टू ह्यूमन आई बट मोस्ट वर्टिब्रेट्स लाइक सम इंसेक्ट्स can clearly see ultraviolet radiations like butterflies and many flowers that appears to have identical color patterns under visible light are distinctly different when viewed under the ultraviolet rays perceptible to insects yani you keh le ke aapke paas human eye to nahi dekh sakti ultraviolet radiation lekin kuch aise insects exist karte hain jo ultraviolet radiations ko kya karte hain dekhte hain acha important difference jo hai अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन और इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन ऑफ लो फ्रीक्वेंसीज उसके दरमियान में इंपॉर्टेंट जो डिफरेंस है वो ये है दैट द अल्ट्रावाइल द इंपॉर्टेंट डिफरेंस इज दैट द अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट हैव द एबिलिटी टू आयनाइज एन एटम और मॉलिक्यूल बिकॉज दे आर फ्रीक्वेंसी इज हायर देन द रेडियो वेव माइक्रोवेव इंफ्रारेड विजिबल लाइट दैट्स वाई द दैट्स वाई दे आर एनर्जी इज हायर देन रेडियो वेव माइक्रोवेव इंफ्रारेड एंड विजिबल लाइट and because of the higher energy ultraviolet radiation possesses an ability to ionize an atom or molecule it means that when an ultraviolet radiation is hits the atom or molecule the atom or molecule absorb the energy from ultraviolet radiation and knock out their valence electron from their valence shell and converts into an ion so all the higher frequency higher frequency electromagnetic radiations beyond visible light like ultraviolet x rays and gamma rays these all radiations are called ionizing radiations because they can ionize an atom or molecule and these three radiations can cause serious damage to human to body tissues living cells to human body and to and causes genetic mutation to our dna and the harmful effect of ultraviolet radiations to human and larger animals are mitigated by the fact that दिस फॉर्म ऑफ रेडिएशन यानी यूँ कह लें कि जो इफेक्ट है इसका हार्मफुल वो इस वक्त इस हद तक कुछ कम हो जाता है कि आपकी ये जो अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन है ये स्किन से अंदर पेनीट्रेट नहीं करती तो स्किन पे फॉल होगी एंड इफ देयर इज एन एक्सेसिव एक्सपोजर ऑफ एन अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन टू आर स्किन देन द अल्ट्रावायलेट रेडिएशन कॉजेज स्किन कैंसर और सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सीरियस स्किन डिजीजेस एक्स रेस द एक्स रेस इज द सिक्स्थ कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द electromagnetic spectrum and uh, it is discovered by a german physicist named ryurjin uh, because ryurjin discovered x rays in 1895 while the ryurjin is studying cathode rays in a low pressure gas discharge tube experiment so during this during the uh, during this study ryurjin discover a new form of radiations known as x rays the wavelength of x rays is smaller than ultraviolet radiation but the frequency of the wavelength of the x rays is higher than ultraviolet radiation and x rays are the photons of high energy and x rays are widely used in medical fields because x rays by because by using x rays we can produce an image of broken bones and this process is known as x ray imaging or radiology because the x rays have the ability to penetrate to our flesh but they cannot pass through our bones that's why they can cause they can produce an image of the bones of our bones on the photographic plate 
and uh, that's why we are using x rays for x rays imaging so x ray also have an ability to ionize atom or molecule because the penetration power of x ray is higher than ultraviolet radiation and x rays cause serious damage to our body because x rays possess the property that they can easily penetrate into our flesh that's why and the continuous exposure of x rays to our flesh causes our muscle cell to dam causes damage to our muscle cells or causes genetic mutation which creates abnormalities in our flesh or in our bones in our flesh or in our bones or in our dna to kya hota hai jiski wajah se aapko kya ho sakta hai cancer ho sakta hai तो एक्स रेज जो है इसका कंटिन्यूस एक्सपोजर हमें क्या करना पड़ता है रोकना पड़ता है बिकॉज द कंटिन्यूस एक्सपोजर ऑफ एक्स रेज कॉज पोटेंशियल हेल्थ हेजॉर्ट एक्स रेज आर प्रोड्यूस इन एक्स रेज ट्यूब्स एक्स रेज ट्यूब्स में एक्स रे प्रोड्यूस होती है जिसमें क्या होता है आपके पास ब्रेम स्ट्रॉलिंग इफेक्ट होता है ब्रेम स्ट्रॉलिंग इफेक्ट का मतलब है कि आपके पास एक मेटल टारगेट होता है एंड यू इमेटेड हाई इलेक्ट्रॉन बी यू हिट हाई इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम ऑन द मेटल टारगेट एंड द मेटल टारगेट आफ्टर एब्जॉर्बिंग एनर्जी फ्रॉम द हाई इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम इमिट्स आउट दी रे फोटोन्स ऑफ हाई एनर्जी एंड दैट हाई एनर्जी फोटोन्स इज नोन एज एक्स रेस तो ये जो कह लें कि फोटोन्स इमिट हो रहे हैं ये इफेक्ट ब्रेम स्ट्रॉलिंग इफेक्ट कहलाता है द लास्ट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम इज गैमा रेडिएशन गैमा रेडिएशन आर द मोस्ट एनर्जेटिक कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन बिकॉज देयर वेव लेंथ इज वेरी शॉर्ट बट देयर फ्रीक्वेंसी इज हायर दैट्स वाई गैमा रेडिएशन कैन इजली पास थ्रू एनी ऑब्जेक्ट एंड कॉज इज सीरियस डैमेज टू दी ऑब्जेक्ट from which the gamma radiation is passed gamma radiation is the product of radioactive atoms because when the because the nucleus of radioactive atom is unstable because of the huge number of proton and neutrons are present in the nucleus and the binding energy of that nucleus is not strong enough to hold the huge number of proton and neutron together that's why the atom becomes unstable and when an, and due to this instability the atoms the nucleus of an atom it starts to disintegrate slowly and when the atom starts to disintegrate slowly the mass of the atom is converted into into an electromagnetic radiations known as alpha particles beta particles and gamma radiation so gamma radiation is the product of radioactive decay it means ke nucleus jab aapke paas unstable nucleus jisme radioactivity ka process hota hai wo tootta hai nucleus to nucleus tootne ki wajah se nucleus mein radioactive decay hone ki wajah se nucleus ke disintegrate hone ki wajah se क्या होता है आपके पास गैमा रेडिएशन इमेट आउट होती है सो so, आपके पास ड्यूरिंग कह लें रेडियो एक्टिव डिके यानी जब ड्यूरिंग कहें जब रेडियो एक्टिव डिके हो रहा होता है तो अनस्टेबल न्यूक्लिया क्या करता है वो इमेट आउट करता है चार चीजें एक तो अल्फा पार्टिकल बीटा पार्टिकल इमेट आउट करता है सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट चीज जो हमारे काम की है गैमा रेस को इमेट आउट करता है और न्यूट्रीनोस को भी इमेट आउट करता है नाउ नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट द मेडिकल फिजिक्स एप्लीकेशन ऑफ गैमा रेडिएशन gamma radiations can be used in medicine or uh, in medicine as radiotherapy because we are using gamma because the the ionizing power of gamma radiation is very higher than ultraviolet or x rays that's why we are using gamma radiation in radiotherapy and uh, for the treatment of the cancer to kill the to kill the bacteria or to or to kill the germs or uh, to treat the damaged cells and uh, controlled exposure of this radiation is possible if you use the certain dose or if you use control ke le ke control agar aap use kar rahe hain is radiation ko gamma radiation ko to iske zariye aap kya kar sakte hain jo tumor hote hain usko khatam kar sakte hain tumor ko kill kar sakte hain aur eliminate kar sakte hain so for the treatment of cancers which is known as radiotherapy we use gamma radiations because of its higher ionizing power The second important application is sterilization of an object. आप क्या करते हैं गैमा रेडिएशन को यूज करके आप सर्जिकल और फूड मटेरियल की स्टेरिलाइजेशन करते हैं बिकॉज द सर्जिकल एंड फूड फूड मटेरियल पजेस सम माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम लाइक फंजाई बैक्टेरिया वायरसेस एंड वेन यू एक्सपोज द गैमा रेडिएशन अपॉन दी सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट और फूड मटेरियल दैन द कंट्रोल्ड एक्सपोजर सो द गैमा रेड सो द कंट्रोल्ड गैमा रेडिएशन कैन कॉज damage or kill microorganisms present in the surgical instrument or food material and makes the food fresh for eating or uh, and improve the food hygiene 
तो होता क्या है आपका फूड फ्रेश रहता है और आपके जो सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट है आप उनके अंदर मौजूद क्या कर सकते हैं जम्स को किल करते हैं इसको यूज करते हुए गैमा रेडिएशन को और ये पूरा प्रोसेस रेडियो स्टेरिलाईजेशन कहलाता है सही है इसी तरह आप क्या करते हैं जो आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं आपके आप आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स को क्या करते हैं आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स वगैरह में जो आपके पास कह लेंगे लार्वा इंसेक्ट्स या बैक्टीरिया मौजूद होते हैं ऑब्जेक्ट्स के अंदर उनको भी कह लें कि आप एलिमिनेट करते हैं बाय ट्रीटिंग विद गैमा रेस यानी गैमा रेस को यूज करते हुए आप क्या करते हैं जो आपके आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं उनको डिग्रेड होने से यानी खत्म होने से बचाते हैं सही है उनको डिग्रेड यानी उनको वक्त के साथ साथ डिस्ट्रॉय होने से बचाते हैं आप तो ये जो टेक्निक है ये हम यूज करते हैं फॉर द कन्वर्जेशन फॉर द कंजर्वेशन एंड रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ आर्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स Uh, ethnology and archaeology it means there is a great use of gamma radiation in archaeology and the use is that that to protect the art objects to protect the ancient objects from degradation <coughs> <coughs> so gamma radiations is applicable to different type of materials like wood stone leathers so you can also treat wood stone leathers with gamma radiation to eliminate the bacteria or viruses present on the surface of wood stone and leather the third important use is gamma ray spectrometry spectrometry the development of gamma ray spectrometry begin with the development of nuclear science yani jab aapka nuclear science aur technology ka keh le ke development shuru hui to usi ke sath sath gamma ray spectrometry spectrometry mein bhi development shuru hui jisme aap kya karte hain ki aap kya karte hain aap control jisme keh le ke control radioactive material ki aapko need hoti hai aur aap kya karte hain radioactive material ko in a controlled environment aap kya karte hain radioactive material ka analysis karte hain अच्छा ये जो टेक्निक है इसने क्या किया फंडामेंटल प्रॉपर्टी जो थी अनस्टेबल न्यूक्लियाई की उसको एब्जॉर्ब उसको कह लें कि आप ऑब्जर्व कर सकते हैं इस टेक्निक इस मेजरमेंट टेक्निक के जरिए होता क्या है कि अनस्टेबल न्यूक्लियाई हमेशा क्या करता है रेडिएशन को इमिट करता है फ्रॉम द प्रोसेस ऑफ न्यूक्लियर डिके यानी अनस्टेबल न्यूक्लियाई जब डिके होता है कंटिन्यूसली जब टूटता रहता है तो वो अपने अंदर से रेडिएशन को इमिट आउट करता है सही है तो इसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि आपका जो न्यूक्लियस है वो डिस्ट्रॉय हो रहा है लेकिन अगर आप गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री की बात करें तो ये एक नॉन डिस्ट्रक्टिव टेक्निक है जिसमें आप क्या करते हैं अपने मटेरियल को जिसको भी आप एनालाइज कर रहे हैं उसे आप डिके होने से क्या आपका मटेरियल डिके या आपका ऑब्जेक्ट डिके नहीं होता यानी टूट आपका ऑब्जेक्ट वक्त के साथ साथ डिस्ट्रॉय या डिस्ट्रक्ट नहीं होता सही है इसीलिए हम गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री को नॉन डिस्ट्रक्ट कहते हैं गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री जो है ना उसका यूज आप कह लें कि बहुत ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो गया है अगर हम बात करें मेट्रोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ये डिफरेंट एप्लीकेशन है गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री सही है अगर यानी कह लें कि आपके पास जब फोटोन इंटरेक्ट करता है मेटल मैटर के साथ सही है स्पेशली बाय द अपीयरेंस ऑफ सेमीकंडक्टर डिटेक्टर्स इन 1960s सो स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री गैमा स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री देन बिकम अ पावरफुल टूल फॉर स्टडिंग डीके पैटर्न यानी यूं कह लें कि आपके पास जब मैटर के साथ फोटोन इंटरेक्ट करता है तो फोटोन के इंटरेक्ट करने की वजह से मैटर क्या करता है एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब करने के बाद स्लोली डीके होना शुरू करता है तो मैटर जो है जो डीके हो रहा है उसका डीके पैटर्न क्या है उस डिके पैटर्न को स्टडी करने के लिए आप गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री यूज करते हैं सही है सो गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री के जरिए आप क्या करते हैं आप बेसिकली कह लें कि ऑब्जेक्ट्स जो हैं उनकी कह लें कि डिकेइंग पैटर्न्स को स्टडी करते हैं आप इसी के तरह आप क्लाइमेटोलॉजी यानी क्लाइमेट्स को स्टडी करते हैं एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स में कह लें कि आप गैमा रे स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री के जरिए एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स में एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स में इसकी एप्लीकेशन मौजूद है इसी तरह मेडिसन में मैंने आपको बताया गैमा रेडिएशन जो है वो एज अ रेडियो के तौर पर आप यूज करते हैं तो आपके पास जो फोटोन स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री है यानी गैमा रेडिएशन में गैमा रेडिएशन जो है ना गैमा रेस जो होते हैं गैमा रेस हाई एनर्जी फोटॉन्स कहलाते हैं क्योंकि गैमा रेस जो है इनकी फ्रीक्वेंसी सबसे ज्यादा होने की वजह से इनकी एनर्जी बहुत ज्यादा हाई होती है इसलिए हम इन्हें हाई एनर्जी फोटोन्स कहते हैं तो फोटोन स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री जो है ना ये हम कॉमनली यूज करते हैं न्यूक्लियर मेजरमेंट टेक्निक्स के जरिए के लिए के लिए मतलब कह लेंगे न्यूक्लियर मेजरमेंट टेक्निक के तौर पर हम इसे यूज करते हैं जिसमें हम क्या करते हैं आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं और क्वांटिफाई करते हैं कि हमारा जो रेडियो न्यूक्लिया है वो कितनी गैमा रेडिएशन इमिट आउट कर रहा है अच्छा ये जो है फोटोन स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री एक नॉन डिस्ट्रक्टिव टेक्निक है और इसमें कह लें कि आपको किसी सैंपल प्रिपरेशन की नीड नहीं होती जबकि कन्वेंशनल स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर्स जो थे वो कह लें कि सेमी कंडक्टर्स डिटेक्टर्स को कंसीडर करते हुए डिजाइन किए गए थे जिसमें हमें क्या चाहिए होता है हाई प्योरिटी जर्मेनियम चाहिए होता है सो क्लास थैंक यू दिस इज ऑल फॉर टूडे and uh, today we will discuss a lot about electromagnetic radiation and uh, inshallah in the coming class i will discuss the remaining part or i will discuss the remaining portion related to the chapter electromagnetic radiation thank you once again allah hafiz assalam alaikum